Council of the Federation, 2017. To Nigerian Port Authority, MPA. During the period, periodic checks on the financial records of the National Port, Nigerian Port Authority, the following observations were made. Issue one, irregularities in the award execution payment for contract, seven billion, 503 million, 344,599 naira. A contract for offshore, for shore erosion, Control works at Akipelai, Ayakoro, and Otoke towns. Where is Honorable, excuse me, where is Honorable Agbedi, Fred Agbedi? Because calling, we are discussing matter that has to do with his estate so that he can shed light on this, please. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Constitution. A contract for shore erosion control works Control works at Akipelai, Ayakoro, and Otoke towns in Bayesa State was awarded at a contract sum of seven billion five hundred and three million three hundred and forty four thousand. Vide award letter reference number HQ. GME CP CONR 16 slash 067, dated 27, 22nd March 2012, with 14 months completion period. Mr. Chairman, as at 11th November 2015, Four payments certificates and advance payment totaling four billion two hundred and forty seven million nine hundred and thirty eight naira three hundred and fifty three naira twenty nine cobble representing fifty six point six one percent of the contract sum had been paid to the contractor. A review of documents and bill of quantities, BOQs, under B number one, general, attached to payment review that mobilization fee of one billion one hundred and twenty five million. 501,650.85 cover paid to the contractor was supported by a conditional bank guarantee from Senate Bank, PSC, with a validity period of 365 days, which expired on the 2nd March 2013. Contrary to the provisions of Section 35 of the Public Procurement Act 2007 and Financial Regulation 2933-1-209, which only provide for submission of an unconditional bank guarantee or insurance board. Two, more than four years after expiration of the bank guarantee, the contractor failed to renew it and the balance of all recovered advance payments stood at 600 Okay, 539 million, 
4,452,959 cup of. The sum of 19,500,000 was paid for the purchase of a three Toyota Elox double cabin petrol engine vehicle. However, there was no evidence to confirm that these vehicles were purchased. Mr. <coughs> Chairman, the sum of 13 million 500,000 Naira was made for annual running cost of the project vehicles, in which 6 million 750,000 was certified and paid to the contractor, but there was no evidence to show what the amount was used for. The sum of 11 million 250,000 certified for compensation of properties to be affected by the project was paid in certificate number three had no records on how the money was utilized, nor the beneficiaries involved. 12,500,000 provided for community relations was certified and paid by certificate number three with no supporting document to validate the payment. 128 million Naira provided for insurance of the works and insurance against damages to persons and properties were certified and paid through certificate number three with no evidence that any insurance policy was undertaken. <laughs> the principal manager quantities of a report on interim valuation certificate number four dated 11th November 2015 showed that the value of works executed at the period was 3 billion 903 million 668,868 naira 75 cover representing 52.07% of contract sum however the total payment made to the contractor was 4,247,998,353 Naira 26 cover, representing 56.61% of the contract sum. This implies that the contractor was paid more than the work executed by 300 and 44 million, 269,484 Naira 51 cover. During inspection of the project, it was revealed that the contractor had since abandoned the project, the project site, and the duration of the project had since lapsed without approval for its extension. Inherent risk, misapplication and misappropriation of fund, leading to possible occurrence of fraud and waste of government resources. Our recommendation, Mr. Chairman, the managing director should be sanctioned in line with extant regulations for the above infractions and the contract on me to ensure completion of the project. And my colleagues, it should be on record the historical background of this project that it was awarded in 2012. So please, may I yield the floor so that I don't become your spokesperson. Uh, spoke Tell us, give us the background of this project that the Auditor General has queried. My name is Engineer Ahmed Rufai Mohammed, FNSC. I'm the General Manager, Engineering, Nigerian Post Authority. This project 
as rightly captured in the Auditor General query, was awarded in March 2012 by the Federal Executive Council. And it was awarded to a company called Mangrove Tech. Mangrove, spell it better. M -A, M A N G R O B E Tech, Mangrove Tech, uh, Nigeria Limited, in the sum of 7.5 billion naira. The job was awarded for reclamation works and shore protection works to be undertaken in three communities in Bayelsa states, namely Ayekoro, Akiplai, and Otoeke. The conveyance letter was conveyed from the Honorable and from the Federal Minister of Transportation, that's the overseeing minister, uh, the ministry that oversees MP activities, and is in Audit. so erosion control works at Akiplai, Ayokoro, and Otoeke towns in Bayelsa State was granted by the Federal Executive Council, which was transmitted by a letter FMOT stroke PROC stroke C4 stroke 1 stroke 190 dated 14th May 2012. It's in Appendix 1 as page 34. Eight of the document before you. Contractor was duly informed at the expiration because the contract was meant to last 14 months and the contractor gave an APD for one year, 365 days. At the expiration, the contractor was duly informed at the expiration of the APD who posited that a renewal will be effected upon response to request for extension of completion period. The expiration status was reflected in the monthly progress report forwarded to the directorate. The directorate will be having copies of request for extension is also attached between pages 38. And block recovery of mobilization fee may create a financial strain to the project. Hence, the need to recovery, the, the need to recover the fee in piecemeal. This amount is under specified requirement, and the specified item of three number vehicles were purchased. Vehicle particulars are also attached in this submission. The expenses on running cost is not on the basis of annual expenses, but valued as time related and frequency of repairs on the vehicles purchased. Copies are also attached to this submission. For a contractor to execute projects in the Niger Delta region, need for community relation and compensation of area boys and militants is compulsory activity of common knowledge to all. Noted for future compliance, that is attaching the, the relevant document, it is noted for future compliance. Payment for insurance of works was carried out by the contractor as required to the tune of the approved amount. The particulars of insurance are usually retained by the contractor. However, copies are attached to this submission. Now, okay. all the attachments made are referred to are between um, pages 38 to, from pages 38 to, to 38 to 154. Sean, then you'll respond. How was this consultant engaged? Did you have a budgetary provision for engaging the uh, consultant as well as the project? And what procedure in line with our procurement act did you go to to engage this consultant? Then 
when you look at the issue of the expiration of the APG, it clearly indicates it expired on the 2nd of March 2013. Is that correct? Yes. But the first letter from the contractor was in what month? The first letter from the contractor, which Aldrat now wrote to you about, the first letter was in September 2013, requesting for contract extension. Is that correct? Yes. And a subsequent one in October. So the APG had expired for a couple of months, even before the request was made. So will you, before this committee, admit that the issue of the APG as provided for in the Procurement Act and the extant regulation was violated? That is something I want you to respond to, because obviously that is the case. And I do not believe that the Procurement Act was conditional in its specifying what kind of APG should be provided for contract. So your explanation that they requested for extension before they would renew their APG is beside the fact. It's not tenable because fundamentally the type of APG requested for was not even provided and yet you awarded a contract of this amount to the contractor without fulfilling that provision as required. That is a point that needs to be made. Finally, so that my colleagues can also ask their questions, where in your document is the proof of payment of insurance of 128 million? Can you please show us the page? Chairman, I want to move that they also provide us with copies of the award letter for this job and the contract agreement because the procurement of vehicles was in September 2012 when the approval by, F, by FEC was in May. So they must have concluded this period, the contract award before this period but these details are not provided. But just show us the page, please, for the insurance. Then the amount also indicated for the car is 14.4, but Auditor General's query is 19.5. All right, Dr. Igwe should get set, but let him show us the, the documents uh, Honorable Maguila from Ben Wissett requested for. While you are doing, while you are looking for the documents, GM Finance, what is the status of this project now? The project has not been completed. Sir? The project is yet to be completed. Is yet to be completed? Yes, Chairman. Since 2012? Since 2012? Yes. Uh, my friends of the media, we need to release it in 2012. And payments made during that time. With a condition that the project should be completed within 14 months. And we're in 2020. So who should we hold responsible? Come on, sir. I'll I'm whom should we hold responsible? Who some, if somebody authorized payment in 2012, and we're in 2020, the Auditor General asks us to sanction the MD. So which MD is to be sanctioned? The eh? yeah, Excuse me, read the Auditor's query now. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is this. CP for fair equity, justice, fair play. Mm -hmm. If somebody authorized payment in 2012 as the MD, so are we going to sanction the current MD? 
listening to myself. I'm, I'm going somewhere. I just want us to be on the same page for fair play. And uh, I won't listen to the presentation of the Honorable Magbila. Uh, they are still looking for the records Honorable Magbila asked for. But I just, uh, it occurred to me that, uh, well, for us not to, to do justice to this matter, we should be able to invite appropriate persons. So, because in my view, yes, government is continuum. But I can't see why we would somebody who became MD recently responsible for payment made in 2012. Honorable Chairman. doctor. Yes. Chairman, in fact, uh, it's about which or something contrary was paid. Uh, look at that piece. You are completely silent on that. <coughs> Did you see anything on that aspect? And then, of course, the issue of the Toyota Hilux, which has been raised, I don't need to repeat that again. But did you see the page I'm referring to? Where I said the principal manager at QS. Yes. Mm -hmm. The interim valuation prepared was for this amount. Yes. But what the MPA paid was higher, far and above what uh, uh, the, the, the QS has battled to, has work done to that, as at that time. But I don't know the basis that form that informed you know, payment of a higher fee than what the quantity surveyor has actually recommended to be the value of uh, job done to date. It was contracted maybe three, four years ago, and the work is not completed, and I'll just put it in sight. And MD has a responsibility. Government, we say, is continuity. There's a responsibility of the MD or a department within that agency to do a follow-up. Remember, there's a consultant who is between the contractor and also the, the agency. Mm -hmm. So, sir, this document, whether deliberate or otherwise, is silent about the communication between either the contractor and the agency within the period after 2013. So I'm asking if there's a com com communication between the agency and either the contractor or the consultant between 2013, 2014, 2015, up to now to the date. Is there a com if there's a communication like that, can they avail it to us? Uh, I was asked how they were engaged. This project is a corporate social responsibility project that MPA did for by Elsa State, these three, three communities. So at <coughs> the point CRS in the sum of seven billion. Mm -hmm. so, approved, start and approved <coughs> the construction. The government owe the citizens to provide amenities. And sure protection is an amenity to protect the landscape from being swept away by water and rain. So if you are telling Nigerian people that this is a corporation responsibility, I disagree, and I tend to contest that with you appropriately. If this exercise falls within the mandate of the agency, so we, it is from there we can decide whether it is, whether it is hard to have classified such activity as, I mean, under corp, uh, corporate social uh, res responsibility. If it's a short protection, if it enhances revenue generation by an MPA, if it adds value to whatever MPA is doing, then it may not be appropriate to classify it as CSR. Like the Auditor General guided us, there is a particular query that is raised against them. Rather than reading or speaking a narrative which has nothing to do with the query chairman he should be guided to speak to the issues about the query that is raised by the office of auditor general the, the background is given let us give him the room let him give us the background but the core issue is what the general has pointed out that the sum of 7.5 billion era was committed to this project in 2012 and he has given us the narration 
of misdeeds, of things that have gone wrong. So for us to come to a conclusion, because it's not easy, if you go, in, if you go by the recommendation of Dr. General, if you uphold the recommendation, someone may be out of circulation for some time. And whether we like it or not, they are citizens of Nigeria, they are brothers and sisters, we owe them a duty of care. So uh, it is not our wish to send anybody out of circulation, but if at the end of the day, we find it so, we will recommend so, and it will left for the executive to do the needful. So then, on the issue of the APG aspiration, the APG aspiration was being captured on regular site meetings that they are, they are, they are, they are, their APG has expired. And they kept saying that they will renew the APG. So that is why it took a long time before we got to where we, uh, we, 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 we they abandoned the site. The issue of uh, the vehicles that were purchased, the documents here, Honorable drew the attention of the House that uh, 14 point something million was paid as against what was budgeted. Sir, I think what was presented, the receipts that were attached here, they were the cost of the vehicles. Remember there is insurance, there is uh, um, um, insurance and what? what VAT and other things. So we can put together the, to the, the, the total and still make uh, the full submission to know how the contractor expended the amount stated there. Then, on the issue of what this management has done, when the current management assumed office, they took a, an assessment of all the existing projects in the organization then. And this particular project. Yes. Sir, the bill of quantity is not here with me to look at, but I can get you that information. But three project vehicles were to be bought, and they bought this vehicle. So if it is the issue of Hilux or Ford, I will check the bill of quantity, which we did not attach here to reduce the volume, and let you know the exact uh, specification in it. The management of Nigerian Post Authority, in their response, they said they are trying to recover money from the contractor because of the expiration of the advance payment uh, APG. And if you look at it, uh, the response of the general manager, he, he said that the project is still ongoing. So I don't know how to reconcile this to Mr. Chairman. And uh, also, they told us that, and even going by the document, the approval from the Federal Executive Council was to a certain company called mangrove tech. But later on, they inform us that the company has changed its name to Kata Kata. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't know the implication of this, the legal implication of this vis-a-vis -vis the contract. So in, light, in the light of this, Mr. Chairman, and uh, so many other things, I would like to move that we, in order to give fair hearing, and in order to get to the root of this problem, we have had a turnover of managing directors at the Nigerian Port Authority. So there is the need for us to invite the successive managing directors, executive directors of finance, and executive directors of engineering to appear before this honorable committee to come and state their position as regards to this query. Furthermore, distinguished members, I will also want uh, this honorable committee to request that the contractor, both mangrove and Katakata, we shall ask uh, Corporate Affairs Com yeah? Kataka or Katakata. No, I don't sir, know. Deputy, do, they, do we have a copy of, sir, of the corporation of that company here? Yeah? Yes, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, sir, okay. Yeah. So uh, the Corporate Affairs Commission shall furnish this committee with the information of these two companies, especially the particulars of the directors, particulars, and what have you. Then also, Mr. Chairman, uh, since this is a 
is a byproduct, this query is a byproduct of a procurement process. We need to look, need, uh, to look deeply into the procurement method. We need to uh, be furnished with the procurement plan, the bill of quantity, the method of selecting the, the, the contract. Oh, no, it's also, this is selective. So we need all these documents, the APG, uh, and the technical evaluation, technical bid evaluation. So, so all these things are contained in the procurement system of the country as uh, enshrined by the Pro Public Procurement Act, especially Section 21 and Section 18. There has to be a planning before you embark on a project. Was there a planning? Where is the planning report? And where is the bill of quantity? Because it is against the bill of quantity that you add, uh, apportion values to the various uh, contract uh, components. So we need this. In fact, Mr. Chairman, Honorable uh, colleagues, I'm just short of saying that we should institute a status inquiry on this particular query. Uh, I will listen to the management of the uh, Nigerian Ports Authority and uh, submissions, comments by the by members. Our position is as follows, that there is need to comprehensively review this project so that we can speak to all the issues raised by the Auditor General of the Federation. Therefore, there is need for the management of Nigerian Post Authority to give us their procurement plan in 2012. The basis of budget formulation is anchored under the activities of Procurement Planning Committee enshrined under Section 21 of Public Procurement Act 2007. And their mandate is anchored under Section 18, which starts from needs assessment, market survey, and to ensuring that any project to be considered in the budget must be undertaken by this committee. And also tell us the method that the agency will adopt in procuring this project. So you need to give us your procurement plan. You need to give us your budget, approved budget. And then you give us all procurement records in respect of this project. You also to give us Payments records made to the contractor. Letter of award, agreement entered into with the contractor. The insurance company that provided APG in respect of this project. These are all the documents that we need to enable us comprehensively address the concerns the raised by the Auditor General of the uh, Federation. We will also remove the veil of incorporation. We want to know the characters behind these companies that MPA gave the job to. We want to know whether they belong to Engineer Rufai. <laughs> so that will be our ruling. 